tell me what's on your radar, Brianna. Well, Robbie, it seems like no matter how much elected Democrats and their allies in the corporate media duck the story, allegations that the United States may have been responsible for sabotaging the Nord Stream pipelines are not going away. Tuesday, former CIA agent turned activist Ray McGovern and esteemed economist and public policy analyst Jeffrey Sachs addressed the U.N. Security Council during its hearing on the Nord Stream bombing. The hearing took place at the request of Russia, which called for a special United Nations commission to determine who was responsible for the Nord Stream terrorist attack. And Cy Hirsch's reporting, which cites an anonymous source for evidence that the U.S. was involved. Now, during the hearing, Jeffrey Sachs summarized Hirsch's report and pointed out that the investigations conducted so far show no evidence of Russian involvement, involvement rather, and that, moreover, Russia lacks the motive shared by the United States and some of its NATO allies. He also pointed out that the sabotage required a level of technical skill and subterfuge that points to a state level or, or national actor. Also of note, he called out Sweden for not sharing the results of its investigation last fall into the pipeline explosion with the global community. Let's take a listen to some of that. The destruction of the Nord Stream pipelines on September 26th, 2022, constitutes an act of international terrorism and represents a threat to the peace. It is the responsibility of the UN Security Council to take up the question of who might have carried out the act in order to bring the perpetrator to international justice, to pursue compensation for the damaged parties, and to prevent future such actions. He also had this to say. Contain around 200,000 pipes. The pipelines sit on the sea floor. Destroying a pipeline of heavy rolled steel encased in concrete at depths of 70 to 90 meters requires a highly advanced technology for transportation of the explosives, diving to install the explosives, and detonation. To do so undetected in the exclusive economic zones of Denmark and Sweden adds greatly to the complexity of the operation. As a number of senior officials have publicly confirmed, an action of this sort must have been carried out by a state-level actor. Only a handful of state-level actors have both the technical capacity and access to the Baltic Sea to have carried out this action. Include the United States, Russia, the United Kingdom, Poland, Norway, Germany, Denmark, and Sweden, either individually or in some combination. Ukraine lacks the necessary technologies as well as access to the Baltic Sea. And finally, listen to this clip. A recent report by the Washington Post revealed that the intelligence agencies of the NATO countries have privately concluded that there is no evidence whatsoever that Russia carried out this action. This also comports with the fact that Russia had no obvious motive to carry out this act of terrorism on its own critical infrastructure. Indeed, Russia is likely to bear considerable expenses to repair the pipelines. Three countries have reportedly carried out investigations of the Nord Stream terrorism, Denmark, Germany, and Sweden. These countries presumably know much more about the circumstances of the terrorist attack. Sweden in particular has perhaps the most to tell the world about the crime scene, which its divers investigated. Yet instead of sharing this information globally, Sweden has kept the results of its investigation secret from the rest of the world. Sachs called on the UN Security Council to look into this information. Sweden has refused to share its findings with Russia and turned down a joint investigation with Denmark and Germany. In the interest of global peace, the UN Security Council should require these countries to immediately turn over the results of their investigations to the UN Security Council. Now, in his remarks, former CIA agent Ray McGovern called out the media for smearing Seymour Hersh and for not covering his report or even just covering the denials by the government in response to his report. He also called out the CIA for its record of lying to the public. That I am a friend of Seymour Hersh, and so I will not. Uh, opine myself, I will cite a very distinguished former U.S. ambassador and also assistant secretary of defense. These are the words he said about Seymour Hersh. Hersh attracts whistleblowers 
because it has a perfect record of protecting their identities and accurately publishing what they reveal after due diligence, despite the government denials and slanderous attacks that invariably follow. His reputation is such that people of conscience seek him out. People of conscience. As a U.S. Army officer and as a CIA employee, I took an oath, one oath. It was to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Some of us took that oath seriously. And let's cut to just a little bit more of McGovern's remarks. It was two weeks ago. Has the New York Times mentioned Cy Hirsch's article? Uh, has it even reported the denials? No, not yet. This is quite, the Germans would say, merkwürdig. This is very, very remarkable. As uh, Jeffrey Sachs has already said, the CIA spokesperson said, the claim is completely and utterly false, quote, end quote. Whoa. Now, I have to confess, being an alumnus of the CIA, that our PR people, our public relations people, do not have a very good record. No one wants to go back 20 years to Colin Powell's speech before this Security Council. Now, after McGovern and Sachs gave their remarks, the other Security Council member members gave brief statements. NATO allies like the U.S., the U.K., and France all made statements which claimed the hearing was merely Russia's effort at distracting the public from focusing on its invasion of Ukraine at the one-year anniversary of said invasion. But let's be clear why we are really here in the Council today. Later this week, as we near the one-year anniversary the General Assembly will debate the impact of Russia's illegal and full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Today's meeting is a blatant attempt to distract from this. As the world unites this week to call for a just and secure peace in Ukraine, consistent with the UN Charter, Russia desperately wants to change the subject. This is not the first time Russia has used its seat on this council to amplify conspiracy theories from the internet. We wish it would apply the same urgency shown over the past three days instead to the myriad credible reports of human rights abuses and violations of international humanitarian law caused by its invading forces. The U.S. and some of its NATO allies also made statements that suggested full faith and confidence in the ongoing uh, investigation. Let's take a listen. Let me state clearly and plainly, accusations the United States was involved in this act of sabotage are completely false. The United States was not involved at all. Competent authorities in Denmark, Germany, and Sweden are investigating these incidents in a comprehensive, transparent, and impartial manner. Resources for the UN investigations should be preserved for cases when states are unwilling or unable to investigate genuinely. But of course, as Sachs pointed out, regardless of one's position on Russia's invasion, a state-directed terrorist attack on energy pipelines with global energy and environmental consequences, of course, is of global relevance. And it is perhaps odd to frame a desire to get to the bottom of who carried out that attack as pretextual when that question is of such obvious importance. Moreover, no one at the hearing addressed Russia's concerns about the lack of transparency or the potential conflict of interest between the people who are currently, the nations that are currently doing the investigation and their potential involvement. Russia's representative was critical of the ongoing investigation by Denmark, Sweden, and Germany, saying that it lacked transparency and that they, quote, seek to simply cover tracks and stand behind their American brothers. Russia had asked to participate in the investigation and was rebuffed. And Sweden has already declined to share the results of the investigation it undertook last year with the general global public. Hirsch's report 
claims that some senior officials in Denmark and Sweden had to have been briefed in general about the saboteur's diving activity in the, air, in the area so that the activity could be kept secret if detected. His account significantly implicates the Norwegians, who he attributes to offering the plan, offering up the plan to time the event to that annual June NATO exercise in the Baltic Sea. If true, the obvious conflict of interest would give significant support to Russia's push to have an independent UN investigation that's not carried out by potential co-conspirators. But while China joined Russia in its call for a UN resolution to establish an impartial commission to investigate what happened, no vote was taken at the meeting. Most of the non-permanent members of the Security Council merely called for the existing investigations to continue. Meanwhile, activist Jose Vega continues to be one of the only people, including journalists, willing or able to ask elected members of Congress directly about the allegations raised in Cy Hirsch's reporting. After confronting New York Representative Richie Torres last week, he confronted House Leader Hakeem Jeffries yesterday, asking him if he's willing to demand an inquiry into, again, who is responsible for the Nord Stream pipeline sabotage. Let's take a listen to some of that. The UN Security Council had a meeting yesterday and Ray McGovern spoke to it. He is a former member of the CIA and he testified in support of Seymour Hersh's article on the United States bombing Nord Stream pipeline. If it is proven that the United States bombed the Nord Stream 2 pipeline as has been asserted by Seymour Hersh and his article, will you call for the United States to acknowledge and admit that that was an act of war against Germany and Russia. And I'm asking this because this may be the only way to prevent the rest of us from being killed in a thermonuclear war. And I don't want to be fried. Don't you think the media should be reporting on whether or not this is true? And don't you think you should be inquiring into whether or not this is true? Well, thank you for the question. Uh, one, I've got no information to suggest uh, that the United States was involved in bombing the Nord Stream pipeline. Because he would have, you would have, you would have been, you weren't briefed on it. Sir, sir, you got your chance to ask a question. So you gave me an opportunity to respond. You weren't given information because he explicitly says you weren't briefed on it. Shouldn't you inquire? So here's what I'll say about, I think, you know, President Biden's leadership generally as it relates to the Ukraine and Russia. We committed an act of war. Now, for one, many might find Jeffrey's response that he has no information to suggest the U.S. was involved to be unsatisfactory. For one, evidence points to a state actor, as Jeffrey Sachs explained. There are only a limited number of viable nations with the requisite skill, motive, and access to carry this out. The U.S. is among them. Moreover, international consensus is that there is no evidence of Russian involvement. And unlike the U.S., Russia benefited from the pipeline and was invested in its functioning. So was Germany. The U.S. is among the most likely culprits for those reasons. And even if the U.S. wasn't involved, Je Jeffrey's apparent indifference to uncovering who, in fact, was responsible for this act of terrorism is somewhat surprising. Now, interestingly, in his remarks before the U.N. Security Council, Ray McGovern noted that he grew up practicing duck and cover drills, as though those things would actually protect you from a nuclear explosion. And he ruminated on what it meant to have come full circle, to once again be worried about the threat of nuclear war. So while Vega's ex expressed concern about nuclear conflict might seem exaggerated to some, history might prove him to be the only person in that room acting with the exigency the moment demands. The question remains. Will there be any pressure at all on the U.S. government or international bodies like the U.N. to truly answer the question, who is responsible for one of the most significant acts of eco-terrorism in history? Non-NATO countries on the Security Council, including Mozambique and Ecuador, highlighted the environmental consequences of the attack, an underreported aspect of the story. Nord Stream sabotage was responsible for what is probably the single largest methane emission ever recorded, up to 500,000 tons. Isn't this worth investigating? It is absolutely worth investigating. And you have to, I mean, you can't help but be concerned that the reason U.S. officials aren't so interested in investigating it is because the U.S. is culpable. That is what everyone who has an open mind and is just not you, you know, going to myopically believe whatever the U.S. tells them to believe, that's what everyone is thinking. Um, and and, on, and if, there, if we didn't do it, if the U.S. is not responsible, and to be clear, I think there is still some possibility that the U.S. was not involved, and, and I, I 
accept Seymour Hersh's reporting. I think it's a very important contribution. It helps clarify potentially what happened. I'm, I'm, but I'm not ruling anything out. I need to learn more. Of course. But if you don't think the U.S. Respo- is responsible and you want to prove that it's not responsible, you need to investigate this. You right. need to call for an investigation. Right. Being, being defiantly against investigating it is itself suspicious. Yeah, the, the rationale that we're given at the U.N. Security Council hearing, it's like, Okay, even if you think that Russia is only bringing this up now and only talking about it with the exigency Mm -hmm. that it's talking about it because it wants to distract from the one-year anniversary of its invasion, fine. These aren't mutually exclusive things. Call a million and one hearings to condemn Russia and its behavior, but also do this investigation into what happened with Nord Stream. If you were accused of a crime... You know, one of one of the things a, a public defender can do, or a defense attorney can do is to try to find who actually did accuse, uh, did did commit the crime in order to get their client off. The idea that there's this kind of aloof disinterest when people like Hakeem Jeffries, peop, you know, are confronted by this, the um, Ricky, Richie Torres confrontation, the attitude of the American representative on the Security Council, it 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 kind of has this whiff of, you know, you can't make me do it. Nobody cares. Like it, it, we, we're gonna, we're gonna have faith and confidence in an investigation that's carried out by countries, some of whom yeah. have also been accused of being involved in the sabotage themselves. I mean, nobody would stand for this in any other case. And it is very curious that there is very little appetite in the American media t- to discuss this, or of course, even to cover what happened at the National Security Council. When Biden says something like. There's not going to be a Nord Stream, or we're going to take care of Nord Stream. It's not going to be a thing if Russia invades, and then Nord Stream gets blown up. People are going to wonder right. what we did right. about it. And, and um, Jeffrey Sachs runs through that whole mm-hmm. kind of narrative as we've discussed it and laid it out here on the show several times in his remarks. It's, you know, it's worth watching. The whole thing is about an hour and a half, but the remarks by um, uh, Jeffrey Sachs uh, and McGovern are relatively short at the beginning of the conference. I, there was reporting, you know, the Washington Post did report on the fact of this hearing having happened. Um, but there does not seem to be much in the way of a media push for there to be any kind of independent investigation. Everyone seems to be satisfied with the idea that America claims it didn't do it. The reports say that Russia has, there's no evidence that Russia did it. And we're just going to leave this up to, gosh, who knows? Who knows who did one of the biggest ecological disasters <laughs> in, in recent history? <laughs> who knows? What a mystery. <laughs> who can say? <laughs> uh, thank you very much for that, Brianna. We'll have more rising right after this. <laughs> 